Okay, welcome to our yoga session. We're gonna start with a uh, massage ball. And if you don't have a massage ball, don't worry, I'll tell you what you can do instead. But um, if you do have the massage ball, why don't you go ahead and place it on the ground and start to roll out your hand. Yeah, so this is a space that we've been working on this week, rolling out the hand. If you don't have a ball, use your other hand to just give yourself a little auto massage there. Uh, spend a few more breath cycles on this side. And you know, you can shift more weight into the ball, of course, by shifting the weight more forward toward the front of your body. And then go ahead and put that ball off to the side and just shake out, uh, shake out that hand. You can shake out the whole arm, you can shake out the shoulder. And then switch sides. either using the ball or just using the opposite hand and you're just opening up the energy in the hand. And breathe really deeply and see if you can keep pouring your awareness back into the hand, into the space where you feel the sensations. With the massage work, massage ball work, I really like to pause in those places where there's really kind of a lot of density and just take deep breaths and let the process unfold. This is just the last couple of breaths on this side. Yes, you might be getting more into your wrist, your upper arm, or sorry, forearm. And then you can go ahead and let the ball off the side and then you're gonna shake out that side. You just give it a little kind of rinse, right? So you can get the whole shoulder involved. Great. And then staying just where you are, you're gonna take uh, the right hand over to the right, take the left arm alongside your ear or, or mirror me, this isn't gonna be a complicated thing. Just a side stretch here and really feel the extension from your outer hip, let it push down and then let that lifting arm reach in opposition. So you're creating a rainbow from one end to the other. This top hand, turn it inwards. It's almost like it's facing towards your face. And then the chin is slightly tucked so that as you spin your chest to the sky, the back of the neck isn't compromised. Big breath in and big breath out. And then you're gonna come up and over to the other side. And figure out any little stickiness that you got going on there. And see if the breath and your attention can start to free that up. Make more space in your in the side that's stretching here, dropping the hip down and reaching the arm in opposition. And then maybe the chin is slightly tucked and the head turns up toward the arms, very sort of classic shape. We'll do it later in a more traditional pose. But this alignment of the neck, shoulders, chest, and arm. Great. And then you'll come on up and you'll make your way onto hands and knees. Uh, you're gonna do some cats and cows, but we're gonna do kind of special cats and cows. So watch me for one, you're gonna tuck your toes under. And with the inhale, you lift the chest, but you actually kind of sit back towards your heels. And you may get a stretch in the legs, you may get a stretch in the feet, you may get a stretch in the chest. And then come forward, you rock the weight more into the hands and tuck your chin, and you might get a stretch through the back of the neck, and then continue. So it's just our regular cats and cows. Oh, and as you come forward, you're welcome to flip the feet over, by the way, and just press the tops of the feet into the ground and then tuck as you come back. If it ever feels too complicated, simplify, drop something and don't worry about it, you know? Because what I really want is for you to be able to keep dropping your awareness into the physical body as you're doing the shapes. So don't let yourself get um, too caught up in the details that you can't drop into the real heart of the exercise. Feel this, couple more. Feel where is the weight, where is the sensation as the weight shifts? And then make your way to downward dog and maybe you can kind of hook that all into the sequence, into the flow, the rhythm of what we were just doing. 
And then go ahead and feel your hands on the ground like they're really spread out. And we're going to work the feet here in a moment as well. But right now, the hands and the feet are really um, our gateways to the sources of earth energy. And then feel your hips lifting up toward the sky energy, toward that spaciousness, the atmospheric aspect of reality. And then feel the water and the fire moving inside of your body in between all the warmth inside of you, all the water flow inside of you. Inhale, come forward to plank pose. And bring your big toes together and then just lift up one foot. Yep, just lift up one foot. And almost like it's made, that leg is made of light. Feel your back body working and feel your front body sucking back up to your back body to support it. Take a really big breath in and a big breath out. Now with this inhale, lift your left leg up high behind you. Reach it up and back. As you exhale, take your left knee to your upper left arm as if you're gonna get it over your shoulder to bring that knee, like suck it in toward the arm. And then inhale, reach the left leg up. And then now you're gonna take the left knee across the body toward the right arm. A little twisty motion. Awesome, and then lift the left leg up, inhale. This time, bring that left knee forward, shoulders over your wrist, knee, suck the knee up into the chest, and then step the foot down. Good. And we're not going to go very far with this. We'll build on to it a little bit later, but can you press down through your feet a whole lot, engage through your belly, and just simply lift up your hands, like really light, no big effort. Feel the work of the legs, press down through your inner feet, and then simply take your hands back down and go back to downward dog. Inhale, come forward again, plank pose. Bring your big toes to touch and just lift up your right leg. And breathe here and feel the backs of your legs, feel the back body buoyant and feel your front body kind of sucking up to that back body to support it. Stay for an in breath. And then downward dog, out breath, lifting up through the right leg. Breathe in there. And then as you exhale, take your right knee to your upper right arm as if you're gonna get it over your right shoulder. Like hug it, sneak it in. And then again, inhale, reach the right leg up. And then going across the body, take that right knee toward that left upper arm. And then again, reach it up and back. And then take that right knee forward, hug it up toward your chest, and then put the foot down in between your hands. And then press down through your feet, kind of open up through your chest, and then just see what happens when you just lift your hands up really lightly. Feel what's working, feel what's strong and sturdy, and feel what's smooth and spacious. Then take the hands back down and meet me in plank pose. From plank pose, lower all the way onto your belly. For twisted gecko. So for twisted gecko, you're gonna take your hands Wide off of your mat and tent your fingers. Press down through your finger pads, press down through your toenails, through your tops of your feet, lift up through your chest. Then dip your left shoulder down and look over your right. Inhale, come up to center. And then do the other side, dip your right shoulder, look over your left. Breathe in, come up, collarbones wide, breathe out, dip left, twist to the right. Inhale, coming up, and other way, dip the right shoulder, look over the left. Inhale, come up nice and square through the center, then hands onto the mat and press yourself up and back to child's pose. So our theme this week is sources. What are our sources, right? What nourishes us? What cleanses us? What makes life possible? What supports us? And so I invite you here to just take a little moment to identify a source or a series of sources that you'd like to dedicate this practice to. Make your way back into downward facing dog as you're ready. 
Feel the rhythm of your breath. If you have a practice where you use Ujjayi breath, you're welcome to come into Ujjayi now. And then you're gonna go ahead and just uh, take a little walk. So your feet will end up in a standing forward fold at the very front of end of your mat. And just get a couple breaths there, hanging over the legs, maybe shaking out the head, maybe releasing through the shoulders a little bit, the upper back. And then as you're ready, you're gonna go ahead and roll up to stand. Now I said that we had some work to do with the feet. I think we do. So uh, you're gonna take your ball. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna step one foot on top of it. And spend about a minute honoring this foot. If you don't have a yoga ball, uh, massage balls, you can sit down and massage that foot with both hands. You could also just do some foot stretches for this minute. Those of you who have the ball, explore the space in between the metatarsals, in between the bones. When we do this massage work, we're not just stretching, right? And we stretch muscles. We're actually also um, toning and, and attuning and making space in the fascia, in the layers in between the muscles and the bones and the tendons. Last breath here. And then go ahead and put the ball uh, off to the side. We'll use it again in a second, of course, but lean onto the standing leg and just shake out this leg. Get the hip involved. And then go ahead and put that foot down and feel it kind of spread out on the ground, right? Like it wants to be connected to its source, the earth, and switch sides. However you're working it is great, wherever you are, whether you're using your hands to massage or you're on the ball, just pour your awareness into the space where you feel the sensation and be with that experience. When I feel particularly disconnected from source, um, it often for me feels very ungrounded. And so for me, working with the feet is, a, is something I'll do, just a really simple technique, right? In any moment out in the world or whatever, just to drop my awareness into my feet, often I feel grounded again. All right, so now you're gonna um, release on that side, lean over onto the standing leg, pick up the foot you just rolled out and shake it. And shake the whole leg. And shake the hip, maybe upper body gets a little bit jiggly too. And then go ahead and um, put the ball off to the side. We're gonna do a couple of sun salutations next. <clears throat> and so put the ball off to the side, but stand now tall and clear at the front of your mat. Feel yourself connected to the sources below you, the sources above you, the sources all around you and inside of you. Hands to prayer in front of your heart, close your eyes and feel yourself coherent in this place, supported by all your sources. Inhale, reach up, look up to your thumbs. Exhale, fold down over your legs and let your head drop. Inhale, lengthen the spine. If you're ready to jump back, you can take a jump back practice. Otherwise, you can just step back and lower down your choice of vinyasa. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Downward dog as you breathe out. Stay here and breathe for one. Those of you who did the meditation practice today, we counted breath in our meditation, which is a classic sort of like beginner training in meditation. But it's surprising, right? You can surprise yourselves at how, how it can take less than half a breath cycle before our mind is already off. Stay here for another two breath cycles and see if you could actually be present for the whole thing. Like you have to kind of slow down and agree to surrender to that journey. There's one breath. And then here comes another journey. 
On your exhale, look forward, step or hop your feet forward. On your inhale, lengthen your spine. On your exhale, fold down deeply into your legs. Breathing in, come all the way up, press down through your feet, engage through your bandhas, lift up through your heart. And lower the arms, lower the gaze, so that it's resting right on the horizon, hands resting in front of prayer. And then again, reach up. And exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Your choice if you want to jump or step back, lower it down. Keeping your back body really buoyant, upward dog. Downward dog. Stay here, count five breath cycles. As if the breath were just the most fascinating thing in the world. Feel it like a ripple through your body. Each moment of the breath cycle is different. Last one. You're gonna look forward and step or hop the feet forward. You're gonna lengthen the spine as you get there and then fold down into your legs as you breathe out. Come all the way up, breathe in, reach up, look up to the thumbs. And lower the arms and lower the gaze and breathe out. Again, reach up. And again, fold forward. Feel that breath pumping through your body. Inhale, lengthen. That's the medicine. Exhale, jump or step back. Your choice. Keeping the back body buoyant. The front body hugged up to the back body as you lower. And then lift. And then find your way to downward dog. Now this time, from downward dog, you're going to float your left leg up. Big inhale. Exhale, left knee deep into the center of your chest, coming forward, shoulders over wrist. We did this earlier. Then step the left foot down, you're in a low lunge. Press down through your feet. And like we did before, lift up your hands. Now this is gonna make it more challenging. You're now gonna bring your arms up alongside your ears and you're gonna see if you can get your chest diagonal to the ground, a diagonal line from fingertips to heel. Left knee is not directly over the ankle, it's backed up just a little bit. And we stay and breathe here, three more breaths. And you feel a nice job. One. Breathe, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. If you come all the way up to stand, you can lower the arms down. Now parallel your feet over to the right. So you'll be facing, turning your toes to face over to the right side. Interlace your fingers behind your back and lift your heart. Then hinge at your hips and fold forward. Yeah, straddle forward fold here. Stay here and breathe and feel. Our sources already flow through us. Our sources are. They can't really even be hurt or damaged. They're so powerful, right? And our job in yoga is really to just remove the obstacles to our sources so they can do their thing. <laughs> Exhale here. Inhale, come all the way up. Warrior two, face in front of your mat again as you breathe out. Go ahead and let the arms lift up to shoulder height. Breathe, get gazing over the left fingers for one. Breathe, two, breathe, three, four, exhale, five. Flip your palms and tip back, reverse warrior. And then go ahead and take the hands down to the planet. Meet me in a downward dog. You can take some kind of vinyasa on your way if you'd like. Got lots of options for those today.
Breathing in downward dog. And then inhale, float the right leg up like it's made of light. Exhale, take the right knee forward, shoulders over your wrists. Hug it there and then step the right foot forward. Adjust through the feet and press down and lift the hands up. Arms end up alongside your ears as you find a diagonal line. Breathing one. Breathe two. Three, four, breathe, exhale, five. Come all the way up, straighten that front leg, parallel the feet to the side. Interlace the fingers behind the back, or if you'd like a different variation with your arms, that's fine. Hinge at your hips, come on forward. Let the head fall toward the earth. Let the arms fall overhead. Breathe. Breathe. Breathe deep, full breaths. And feel the breath move through those spaces. It's cleaning out the obstacles. Right now. Last exhale. Then coming all the way up. Warrior two, face the front of the mat. Let the arms lift up to shoulder height. Gaze over your right fingers. Breathe one. Two. Three, four, breathe, five, reverse warrior, flip your palms and tip back, open up this right side waist and then bring the hands to the ground, meet me in downward dog. Now we're gonna put all of this together as a little bit of a flow here. Find the rhythm of your breath. And then here we go. Exhale. Inhale, float your left leg up like it's made of light. Exhale, bring the left knee forward, shoulders over your wrists, then step the foot down. Angled lunge, float the arms up alongside your ears. Coming all the way up as you breathe out, straighten the front leg, parallel your feet to the side as you interlace fingers, lift chest, breathing in. And the out breath folds you forward, straddle. Come all the way up, warrior two, face the front of your mat, float the arms up and complete the exhale. Flip palms, inhale, reverse warrior, big inhale. Here's what we're gonna add on, extended side angle. Put your left forearm onto your left thigh. Take the right arm alongside your ear and take this nice big stretch. Breathe for one. Now this is much like what we were doing at the beginning of class with the upper body at least. So the right arm is turned in, the chest is turned up, the chin is tucked slightly. Here are your breath. Three. Four. Breathe, really press through that back foot, reach through the extended arm. Five, then look down, Parj Votanasana. So you'll frame your left foot with both hands. Step the right foot a little forward and a little to the right. Show it from this angle. So it's a little bit of a wider stance, right? So you can get weight on both feet and you can square the hips. Press down into your hands, maybe blocks are there, and then fold over your left leg. Stay here and breathe in. And breathe out left. Three. Two. 
Feel the body in space, feel it connecting to its sources. Breathing four. Breathe. Exhale, five. Meet me in downward dog. You can take your own journey there. And then find the rhythm of your breath and exhale. Use the inhale to float the right leg high. Exhale, round the right knee to your nose, shoulders over wrist, and step the foot forward. Let the arms come up alongside the ears, big inhale as you reach, angle of lunge. Exhale as you come all the way up, drop the arms, interlace fingers parallel feet to the side. Take the inhale to reach up through the chest. Take the exhale to hinge and fold down between the legs. Coming all the way back up on an in-breath. Face the front of the mat, warrior two, and let an exhale complete the shape as the arms lift shoulder height. Reverse warrior, flip palms, tip back, inhale. Extended side angle, bring your right forearm down onto your right thigh. Take the left arm alongside the ear and create this nice long line for yourself. And breathe deeply, one. Two. Feel the energy moving through these spiraling shapes, inner spiral of the arm, outer spiral of the chest. Breathe deeply, three. Four, fully in your inner world. Exhale, five. Look down, frame your right foot with both hands. Take your left foot and step it a little forward and a little to the left until you're square in the hips, chest facing forward, press into your hands, lift the chest and then drape yourself over your right leg. Keeping weight in both feet, breathing one. Breathe two. Feel the breath. Three. Four, breathe, five. Meet me in downward dog. Great, then inhale, come forward to plank pose. And bring the feet together like we did at the beginning. Pick up the left leg. Like it's just made of light, feeling the hamstrings working. And then maybe you just a tiny, tiny chatter on the dip, just tiny. And then come back up, plank, three-legged dog. Left leg up and back. And this time, if you want to open up the hip, you could do that. Then go ahead and inhale, straighten the leg, square off your hips. Like we did at the beginning, take your left knee to your upper left arm and really hug it into the arm. Then place the foot down outside of the left hand and lower your right knee so that you end up in this uh, Anjane Asana variation, a big stretch of the right hip. You could stay up on your hands or you could choose to bring the forearms down wherever you are, breathe deeply. One. Two. Three, four, and five. You can release that if you've got a foot. Come back up onto your hands, and then what would it take for you to be able to retrace those steps? Meaning, can you hug the left knee in toward your arm? Kind of suction it there and then pick up that left foot like it's made of light. Awesome. And then again, the three-legged dog. I'm going to add in one more thing here. You're going to take your left knee now toward your right upper arm, shoulders over your wrist, and then step the left foot, show it this way, step the left foot outside of the right hand. 
so that you end up in a twist. It's called fallen triangle. And then you just open up the chest to the side. And if this is not your cup of tea, right, you can skip this one or you can take Bashi Sasana side plank. Because this is a lot about the strength. Keep pressing into the back foot. If you want to challenge, you could pick up the left foot. Two more breaths. And then looking down, make your way back. So unwind, hands come down, step the foot back, downward facing dog. Now inhale, and come forward to plank. Pick up your right leg. Maybe you do a little chaturanga dip so heart comes forward, elbows back. And then push right back up. And then three-legged dog. Open the hip and bend the knee and just take a little moment there to feel into that space in the hips. And then go ahead and unwind yourself. And you're gonna take the right knee to the upper right arm as if you're gonna get it over your shoulder and you're gonna tap it to the arm and suction it in. And then step the right foot outside of the right hand and lower the left knee. And breathe here, or perhaps we'll go a little deeper. Hear the breath and feel the breath and be inside of your own experience. Notice where you're resisting the experience. And can you just surrender and soften to it a little bit more? For four. And then releasing five. So again, we're gonna try to retrace our steps. So you're gonna press into your hands, pick up the back knee, and then so you can pick up the right foot and kind of suction that right knee into your arm. And then go ahead and bring it up and back for the three-legged dog, breathing in. And then bring that knee forward toward the left upper arm and then step the foot outside of the hand at the front of your mat, toward the front of your mat for fallen triangle. Shift the weight over onto your right hand and the left foot spins down. Show it from this angle too. And then this top arm lifts. Hear your breath. Some of us may play with picking up the bottom foot, three. Breathe, four. And five, go ahead and take the left hand down. Start to make your way back to downward dog. Great, great. Big inhale. And then as you exhale, look forward and then hop or step all the way through and take a seat. Paschimottanasana, so legs straight as you come to sit, lift up through your heart, fold forward. Stay here and breathe for one. Breathe, two. Breathe for three. Breathe four. Breathe for five. Come all the way up to sit. And you're gonna do ankle to knee pose, either seated or reclined. So to do it seated, you're gonna stack the left shin on top of the right shin and you want them actually really properly stacked. Not cross-legged, right? Not a little sloppy here, but really stacked. If you have space in between, that's fine, just as long as they're stacked. You could put a blanket there or a block. Those of you who wanna come recline, it's the same thing, you're just on your back and you're um, hugging this right leg in as the left knee actually presses forward. The left uh, ankle should be pretty pretty flexed. Whichever version you are in, you're gonna breathe 10 breaths. Breathe 
And you're gonna do your best to feel each one fully. Just listening to your own breath, your own inner world. Returning to your source. If you want to breathe out of the mouth, you can. And then when you're ready, you're gonna really simply switch sides. So my friends on your back, stay on your back and just switch. If you're seated, switch. When we stop focusing on the outer world, naturally the awareness gathers back at its source, the inner world. And then suddenly we find that we've got all this extra awareness inside. We can notice things we've never noticed before. And in that way, our universe gets faster when we turn inward. Our understanding grows exponentially when we can see the truths inside. If you want to let an exhale or two out of the mouth, you can. And then we are gonna make our way onto the back. So once you're on your back, um, I want you to just keep that right foot on the floor, but just hug the left knee into your chest. And then if you want to extend the right leg, you can, you can extend it, you can even kind of roll the ankle, you can roll it the other way. Roll both angles. <laughs> and then we're gonna take a really simple little twist. You're gonna now take this left knee that you've got hugged into your chest and you're gonna deliver it over to the left, the right side, sorry. And the arms come out wide in a T shape and your head turns away from the leg toward the left arm. And some of you might really like a block under your knee and a block under your foot here. You want a little prop situation? And surrender to the rhythm of breath, which is really, again, it's a journey. Feel how full you get and expanded and kind of puffed up you get on the inhale, how spacious. And then feel how surrendered and small and delivered back to the arms of the planet you get. So it's like the inhale takes you up to Father Sky and the exhale takes you down to Mama Earth. And really our life lives in the space between Come on up. And this time take the right knee into your chest and you can take a moment, just extend the other leg and you can roll ankles. You can do whatever you want here. Just feeling those, those spaces. And then come over into the twist, deliver the right knee up and over to the left side. And if you're doing the props, you might be able to make like a little shelf basically to put your, shin on. And then settle in for the sensations. They feel totally different on this side for me today. Feel this relationship with expansion. 
the relationship with surrender and contraction. And then come on back up. And I want you to choose either a bridge or wheel pose, up to you. So for bridge, just put your feet into the ground and then interlace your fingers behind your back. For full wheel, kind of start the same way really, lifting up the hips and then coming to the crown of your head, hands alongside your ears, and then maybe you lift all the way up to wheel. This is not for everyone. Three for two. Three, three, four, and five. Come down and choose an inversion practice now. So that could be headstand, shoulder stand, could be handstand or forearm stand, or the most simple version legs in the air, which I like to do with my hips propped up a little bit. One minute of inversion practice of your choice. With the opening of the hands and the feet and the kind of working with the sources at both ends, handstand could actually be kind of fun today. Wherever you are, feel the energy moving in your body. Feel yourself plugged in to the bigger body of the universe. And finally, if you have a pose that has some counter poses, do your counter poses. And then everybody make your way into a Shavasana, a final resting pose, or some kind of restorative pose of your choice. Just so long as for a couple of minutes you can, you can get some rest. Um, really important, you know, I let, I've created these short classes so that people can um, just kind of fit it in. I'm also encouraging people to, if you feel inspired to practice a little longer than the video or the session, Great, but I will say it is important at the end of a session, no matter how long, just to give yourself a little bit of time doing nothing. Feel your front body drop down into your back body and feel your back body absorb it. And then feel your back body dropping down into the earth and feel the earth absorb back. Let yourself be held by your sources. Let the personal will go to rest. And so the divine will can come and do its work. If you're gonna to choose to stay resting, beautiful. Stay resting. If you're gonna to choose to keep practicing in some way, great. But when you do feel ready to come to sit up, move very slowly. We, we don't wanna kind of toss out the window any of the peace that we've established. So moving as slowly and quietly as you can, you can come over onto one side. 
and press up. Take a quiet moment with your hands in prayer. Bowing down to your inner sources, inner wisdom, hair, power. Of the Shri Sakuruma. 